<laughs> this is a conversion van? Yeah. Wow. This is how I get picked up from the airport. And you just look like an, a locked character. Uh, Canadian hospitality. I'm your chauffeur for the day. I don't even want to know just how expensive this thing is. You picked me up in this. You couldn't have just picked me up in a Miata or something, but... <laughs> we'll, we'll go back in a Miata. <laughs> and I love how you had, like, my videos playing on the TVs in here. Like, that's yeah, a nice little touch. doesn't want to see themselves. <laughs> so where are we going right now? We're going to Legendary Motor Car. And what were you saying they just had a bit ago? They had a Pagani Zonda R a few years ago. I don't know why it didn't register to me that you said XJ220. <laughs> Yo. Oh, they're close. Like... You can't... We can't be this close. Celine S7, XJ over there, a bunch of Cobras, Carrera GT. Are you guys, are you open or? Well, we tried. I also need to get a 250 GTO. Oh yeah, 250 GTO is the most. So we just get here and the very first thing I see that's airsoft related is this gold G&G &G M9 in the kitchen. We just piled all our stuff at the door because we were, hey. So you just made a room spe like specifically for me. Dude, this is awesome. This is the, the Scott Hollenbach uh, F40 themed Airbnb. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. You can keep these though. These are like, these are all extra ones I have. It's there, you got like an LM. So is this everything or a good portion of it? This is, this is everything. this gas blowback version it's uh another one that i'm switching out from electric to gas see what i mean the lighting's kind of crappy but but the guns are sweet i think we can make it work we'll make it work if i ever get myself a minigun i need to get a feed shoot with it yeah 3d print feed shoot i'd like to i actually have more links i got to put them together and then a backpack and a sling, that thing is going to be Oh, badass. you basically have a Predator pack. Yeah, like a, a full-on Predator pack is the idea, minus the M60 handguard. I like this one a lot. Uh, MWS Marui, just got it, but it's like built up a little retro. It's got like short 203, short 203 handguard, Seymour. Oh, that's why you're not allowed in here. You normally keep your guns in the fridge? Uh, well, it broke, and I was like, it's broken, but I don't really want to move it. And look at all this storage space for guns and mags. So it became pistol storage and mags. Like, look, I can put so many mags in these drawers. So or literal there. stacks of pistols. Yeah, I got a whole other rack on the bottom I could put it. But instead I got this big-ass G&G... What was this thing called again? Piranha, I think. Piranha SL. I totally missed these down here. Is that one of the gas blowback? It is. Tech nines, the dude. Old, that's my oldest gun right there. And then over here, two Mac 11s. Is that a wood back grip too? That's really cool. Yeah. And then I don't know if you guys can see that. There is a, actually I can pull this one out. A mini Uzi with a really cool suppressor on it. You weathered this too a little bit. Yeah. Kind of a crappy, it's like a rookie weathering job. It's lots of silver, sharpie, and sandpaper. But it looks really good, especially on camera. Yeah. So at the moment, we're moving sections of guns into different rooms and different areas of the house. And 
right now we have two USP matches, which I've seen these on EVIC over and over again. I've been wanting to order some, but you've got the dual wield set up here. You got an FN57, the Rhinos, a Chavos. Ooh, Tanaka M500 it is. Yeah. I've got Short one of barrel. these. Yeah, I've got one of these in the 10.5 inch. And, oh, and you've got the Raging Bull too. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one of these since like Jarek 4, if you remember those old oh, videos. Oh yeah, yeah, Jarek's a beauty, the gaming dragon. I actually have him on Discord, you want to message him? Yeah, let's message him. And this is a piece of history. Yeah, that's original KWA. Not the Agus custom or whatever, that's Oh, it, the man. new one? Yeah. yeah. Robocop. Uh, that's one of my favorite movies. I had to get the gun. It's and... too bad, it's like cheap plastic, but... And I see the TT-23 and the Desert Eagles, but you have a very big soft spot for the M93R, right? Yeah, this is probably, like, if this was, this is actually the closest I came to putting in my top 10 for pistols. Uh, M93R is definitely up there. Like, I have two of them here, well, three with the Auto 9, but counting these two, I would honestly get, like, 10 of these if I could. Just, uh... I think K, these are KWAs, but KSC has one, and you can get an Auto Nine kit that's like steel. That's what I'd love to get. But you collect M93Rs, and I'll just keep collecting Galils. So whenever you want to get rid of this one, feel free to message me. Yeah, well, that one's mint. You know what's funny is I've had people offer me like a thousand dollars for my Galils. Uh, I find that crazy, but it would. I would do it. I mean, I take care of mine. Yeah, this one's brand new. I even have a magazine that is autographed by Markiplier, Bob, and Wade, which is the weirdest thing ever to think about. But I've got like 40 or 50 of these magazines, so one of them can be just a very weird one. Yeah, well, and with that signature, that gun's 10 grand now instead of a thousand. <laughs> All right, so we're finally here in Toronto, Canada with my buddy Josh. You guys might know him on Instagram as Half Speed Half Sim. He's always posting all sorts of crazy stuff. Josh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work at a car dealership. And your whole family's been in it for how long? Uh, at least 15 years. 15 years. So I like cars, I like guns, and you've got a big combination of that. And it looks like you have one package yeah, and then another one. We got a couple here. We'll, we'll grab this one after, but. Uh... Yeah, the collection is at least 100k, uh, Canadian that is, but uh, yeah, it's pretty extensive, so we're going to take a look. Question, what is in here? That is a VFC G3060. Yeah, I love that you guys get like VFC gas well backs because we can't really get them in the United States. I didn't like, I I did not know that, but yeah, I've been buying the hell out of VFC gas well backs lately. <sighs> if you love gas well back stuff, you're going to love what's inside this house. They got lots. Okay, so like for at least three hours yesterday, me and Scott, went through everything. We've been like organizing the collection as much as we can. And uh, we've been laying out the guns. Uh, we tried to sort them out a little bit um, for them to make sense. Got ARs, some Germans, some bull puppies, Rusties. Uh, we got picked 10 of my favorites. We'll go through those after. DMR precision rifles, like we got everything. We got support weapons. Um, and you would say maybe this is half. Oh yeah, there's a full basement full of guns. Like there's pistols, there's still rocket launcher. Like, I don't know, it's, it's hard even to know where to start, but uh, we got lots of guns to look at. I can see that he likes Evic as well. Or hates it, you can't quite tell. He, he loves it. I know a lot of people are gonna be asking about this chair. Yeah. Because 
We don't have the G11 in the Airsoft world. We definitely don't have the Pancor Jackhammer because, I mean, after all, there's like two of them in the real world. Yeah, like, they're super rare, obviously. So we're going to go over this stuff. We're going to go over all the SMGs, which consists of this table, this couch, um, the floor over here. There's, there's a cat. There's, there's so much stuff. Okay, so I got to start off by first thanking everybody who's ever used the EVIC link, our exclusive EVIC link, because for the amount of people that have been using our link every time they do anything and grab anything from EVIC, this trip is because of you guys. So be sure to be using our exclusive EVIC link that you can find in the description down below anytime you need anything off of EVIC.com. This video is not sponsored by Monster Energy Drink. Because if you keep using that link, then we can make more trips to Canada, to the UK, back to Japan, anywhere. It's up to you guys. But let's go ahead and really dive into this Airsoft collection. I, I love just this, how this looks right here, because you've got... I should just keep the house like this, I think. I mean, this already stays here, so might as well put the rest. Any super nerd like me would have a field day in here because WESVD, WE M14 EBR, Snow Wolf Barrett, SOCOM Gear it is the Shell Ejector, so SOCOM Gear shy tack and then, I mean, come on, DSR, uh, DSR-1, I almost said DSR-50, we I wish we had a DSR-50. DSR-1, this is the Ares one with the trades, we have the older Ares WA-2000, this thing is always lovely, a lot of people's dream gun. And because this is Canada, VFC gas blowback PSG-1. Come on, I've got to get one of those. And you've got the enormous suppressor on here with the bipod. Ugh. Yeah. A uh, common recurring theme uh, in my collection is definitely video games slash movie guns. Uh, majority of them... I got because of one or the other, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite video games. So I'd say like majority of my collection either has something to do with uh, pop culture or something like that. Okay, these are the bullpups uh, to start with, go over them quick. g, &G F2000, Hunter version with the scope. The same model I would want for sure. You yeah. got an interesting grip on it though. Yeah, it, was, it gives me P90 vibes, so. Um, next one, recent edition, GHK AUG A2. Uh, they call it the A2, but we all know it's the A1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, above that, Ares Caltech RDB, uh, Mall C1, uh, Hammer Optic. Beside that, uh, Tokyo Marui Famos SV, super creaky and old, but cool. Above that, Real Sword Type 97B. Every collection should have one. And I've got that version. I want to get the normal version, even though this is the more rare version, whatever. But I love my GHK AOG, so good pick. Yeah, yeah, that's a must. So this is the WE Scarl with everything but the kitchen sink. Uh, SRS Optic, G33 Magnifier, EGLM. Scott had to tell me that. I, I forgot. <laughs> I, I always thought these looked super ugly, but it only goes with the scar. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like Ghost Recon or I don't know. One of the games had it. I thought it was cool. A lot of my guns go off like video games or movies. That's a big recurring theme. D Bal A2, I believe. And don't know the name of the suppressor. This is the actual like EGLM specific. Uh, Launch from site. Site. Uh, actually supplied by Eva. Thank you. Uh, this is pretty cool gun. Very heavy. Pretty useless. This is a, a gun like my 10 year old self would have built. So How much would you say that this whole setup is valued out in Canadian dollars? Uh, if I were to resell it, I would ask like 800 bucks Canadian for, for everything. But I'm not selling it. I'm going to keep it. Beside that, ICS Scalio, another collector needs this in their collection, or if you just got multiple. Yeah, I've got five of these, a SEMA Galil, and my real one, and I've had people legitimately offer me a thousand dollars for one of my ICS Galils. 
WE G36 with the AG36. Really good, nice combo. Love the underslung launchers on my guns. And the dual optic carry handle, beautiful. Uh, Snow Wolf M41A pulse rifle. Hopefully you got that right. Any reason why you got the black version and not the like movie correct color? So I obviously wanted the green, or I believe the green's a uh, movie correct. This is the only one I could get here. It's a lot hard to get certain guns here in Canada. So. And you said that like earlier well, that yeah, you got yeah. scammed. I got scammed. This is like usually I'm pretty good, but I got scammed hard. I got scammed like 650 bucks on Hop Up trying to buy one of these, and then I still spent another however much money on this one. And it's because you didn't read his reviews. Yeah. Buyer's mistake. This, I really, really love. What is this? I know what it is. Well, what is this? Uh, another VFC gas blowback. The HK53. Actually, quite new in the collection. You can see, like, it's still very stiff, but, uh... God, what a beautiful gun. That thing's got really good range. A little happier now? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I have the LCT version. You had the LCT version. Correct. But you did what a lot of people would love to do, and you went to gas blow back. Yeah. And I gotta admit, that's exactly what I wanted and to do as well. Actually, when I sold the LCT, I got like almost the same amount that I paid for this. So I feel like it was worth it. Like this, it's really light though. Uh, it's lighter than the LCT. It is. Yeah, it's weird, but sick gun. Okay, so while you take a small drinking break, we have an LCT SR3. I think this is such an interesting, weird little compact gun. And the stock sucks on these, don't they? Terrible stock. And then we have the beloved VFC FAL. Everybody's been wanting one of these. Even VFC haters who cannot stand their gas blowback systems want a gas blowback FAL. This thing is awesome. Oh, I want one of these. <laughs> I want more. I want more. I was saying I'm going to hopefully put some wood furniture on it, maybe do a Canadian C1, hopefully. Then we have an oldie but a goodie. This is a G&G &G FNC. A lot of people have been looking for these, and sadly, this one has had the same fate as many. Charging handle broke off. Now, I've seen that happen on a few guns, and I am hoping that it never happens to mine. And then over here, if I can step over these, just a normal AGM STG 44. I got into Airsoft because uh, ever since I was a kid, I've always been a huge gun guy, a uh, fascination with all things guns from video games and movies. And uh, being in Canada, can't really get too many uh, cool real guns. So Airsoft was, well, also something I could get into earlier on uh, in, in age and I could basically get whatever I want as an airsoft replica. So that really drew me, drew me to airsoft. So that is 14 guns down, but then we move on over to the M4s section. You might notice, not a big AR guy, but they've been growing on me lately. I like when my ARs are a little bit different. This one is kind of a, well, it's a WEM4 gas blowback, steel trigger pack, steel bolt, uh, I wanted like a desert storm or something. Uh, I haven't painted the site. ACOG, pack box, torch. It's a cool look. I, re I actually really like this gun. It's kind of a sleeper build. Uh, beside that, uh, MWS M4, Tokyo Marui. Now a lot of people say that Tokyo Marui's MWS is the best gas blowback M4. Any thoughts on that? Uh, out the box, I'd say it's Probably the guess, best, best gas blowback one, but uh, I feel like the WE with a few mods, uh, you can make it just as good. Um, M203 with short 203 handguard. Everyone likes to look at this. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, I don't know, it's like a little, little scar face, but car 15 stock. And I always liked the Seymour uh, with the rear sight. Like, this is a full 
piece there. I always like the look of that. So it's like a old school look. This is, uh, see if there's any gas in it. No, but this is a, one of the recent additions as well. Uh, above here, uh, WE416C, they call it like the 888C trademark. I love that band. <laughs> uh, this is LCO, LCO site, obviously a repro. Most sites my repros, but I'm not going to say repro every time, so I'll say if the site's real. Uh, drum site, I paid like 50 bucks for this stupid site, but I needed it to finish the build. Uh, torch, and that's the Rotex V suppressor by BNT. This one's cool. For Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl fans, it is called the TRS 301. It's a GNG ZMLR 300. I hunted this stupid stock down for two years. I think I or ended up ordering it from uh, like Ireland for like 100, well, with conversion, 100 bucks Canadian. But it completes the look. It's not comfortable. It's not a good stock by any means, but it it looks right. It looks right. And also, this was this is in the game. They have the uh, the iron sight in front of this the suicide. It looks stupid, but or I don't. I like the look, but some people say it looks stupid. I really like this one. Another gamer gun for for my gamer fans. Okay, so explain this. A John Wick gun in the collection. Gas blowback too, MPX. Of course. This is an APFG SIG MPX. It does have some nice trades on there. Done up as John Wick 3 Terran Tactical MPX. I just wanted to feel like, who doesn't want to feel like John Wick sometimes? Um, the kids from Octagon, I believe, or not I believe, it is from Octagon, added the MRO and the TLR8 in the silly position, but that's how it is in the movie. It's got to be movie correct. Same with this little side rail. I don't have the bolt or the trigger yet. Don't hold that against me one day. Oh, yeah. Like, as if that's going to ever be a problem. Yeah. Trust me. I have a big list of things I still need to get. Two There's... guns that you really want to get right now. Two guns I really want to get. Uh, God, there's so many. Uh, I want the M202 Flash by Aerodynamics. That's like... $4,000 <laughs> and I want a I want some more NPO oh the NPOG VS the big one VSSK or something it's like gone internal oh HPA okay no, 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 yeah, in the suppressor but on to this one uh GNG Cobalt Kinetics Banff oh, team nice. rifle I hated how these gained some stupid reputation that it's the gun that auto drops the magazines However, it's this switch, like it's a little trap door that flies up, but you can easily turn it off, but people don't understand that. All you gotta do to put it back in is just put the follower back in and make sure it's in the magwell, that's it. But yeah. I guess stupidity ruined the reputation of this gun. It's, it's an awesome gun. I know it was expensive, I know it's heavy, I know this stock isn't adjustable, but once you hold this gun, it's amazing. I threw on some blue anodized parts to match, like, like it's got a blue theme going with already. So I got the site, the GNG the GN makes a suppressor, it, I'm pretty sure it's for this gun because why else would they put that blue? Mag base plate, vert grip, I got this little, it's like Oh a, yeah, your mock heartbeat, heartbeat sensor. Yeah. You gotta love all the gaming influence in here. I know you were saying that yeah. everything is influenced like either from movies or video games. I'm, so. like, I'm a big culture, I don't know. Like if, if there's something cool from a movie or video game, I want it. So another video game gun. So these are like the LMGs. This is Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, well, I'm a video gamer, I should know this. Raptor PKP Pechneg, I believe. The most I probably awkward, butchered that. The most awkward thing you can oh, hold. Oh yeah, look, I'm like shaking. This thing is heavy as hell and awkward, but cool. The worst sight ever. Oh yeah, everybody wants one of these stupid monocle o sights. OKP, OK piece of shit is what it is. Uh, but it looks cool, it does look cool. I'll give them that. Like look how awkward this thing is to hold. It's pure looks. Yeah. Once you realize the build quality of this thing is something that a four year old can achieve, then you don't think it's so good. Yeah. 
I heard it doesn't shoot that great. I've only shot it once or twice. Um, it's a collector's piece. A lot of these are collector's pieces. It's a cool one. The KAC Chainsaw, COD Ghost fans. Another video game. You'll see lots of video game stuff. KAC Chainsaw, it's an Ares Stoner LMG with this zombie killer kit, I believe they call it. But this thing is just like pure fun. You just throw the laser on them. Oh yeah, and then like, because the, the actual one has like a launcher, it's a, I think it's a flare launcher on the real one, but I just threw like an M203, but you just hit fire this thing, and I guess it would kill a lot of zombies, so a zombie killer makes sense. Out of everything in the collection, I think this has got to be the most awkward thing to hold. Now, I do own a GMG-42, the MG-42 from G&G, &G, and I've shot many miniguns, but this thing is absurd, especially with your grip being so far out to the left. I know that's an attachment choice, but where else would you realistically hold this thing where it'd be comfortable to hold for like 30 minutes straight? This thing is stupid. Everything just falls over now. Yeah. Another yeah. piece that I own myself is an ICS L86, but you put the double drum, the beta magazine on this thing, so now you can't really use it. Internet commenters hate it. You either got to full chicken wing it, or you got to do this like under grip. I put on the mag for pictures and stuff. I wouldn't actually skirmish it like that. And I like to stir some shit, so. Beside that, this is the s and It's not the Echo One, it's just the s and M240 Bravo. You know they're making the Woodstocks now? I've seen that, yeah. I saw um, them just go up I on Evic and I've been wanting one. Elcan site and Peck Box. Just a clean, quick look. Classic, of course. NK M60. A lot of people know this. This isn't the Vietnam version, but this one has seen some stuff. No. So this... I like this one. So this one's a movie why I got this version. Because... Or, you know what? It might be the E3 that he uses. But in uh, Rambo's is E3. I was thinking like Commando when Arnie. Oh, is, okay, is yeah, yeah. Like rampaging through the courtyard, and he's like, he picks up one hand the M60s, biceps looking massive. It probably is E3, but I like the the vertical grip. Also, Tears of the Sun, and then EMG 1919, just a beast of a gun. He's uh, always sell out on Evic. Yeah, I threw a spade, a little 3D printed. Cheap spade grip on there. It's gonna hate like the purest, but I like spade grips and I can put the original grip back on in like two seconds. Something to be made into an airsoft gun that I would like to see. Well, there's a lot that I'd like to see, but a gas blowback AN94 would be like super sick. Welcome to Precision Island. Starting off strong, we have. Ares SOC SLR. It's not a well-known weapon. I don't even know if it's a real firearm because I looked it up and I didn't find any info. But I I really like the look of this gun. It reminds me of like a modern WH2000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Overbore bipod. I think that was the the ethos for it. Um, but this this one is semi-auto. Um, now why couldn't they just do this with their WA2000? Yeah, I, that that's true. I didn't even think of that. They, they did this, but they didn't update their WA-2000 yeah, to the SMI. It's the same auto. brand, and like... Same could, shape. Well, now I'm pissed. So anyways, um, this one I have a Sightmark, yeah, Sightmark Wraith HD. It's a digital night vision optic. Um, it's pretty cool. You can like record, change reticle, do all that fancy stuff. It's almost like a thousand bucks Canadian just for the optic, but... It's real steel capable also. Piggyback, RMR, just for reasons. Going on to the next one. I really like this. I really like EBRs. This thing's heavy. WE M14 EBR, RA Tech steel trigger and bolt. Gotta get those steel internals. M14s always have the best. Like, so like rewarding. There you go. So did you ever know that I had an original WEM14 and it exploded on me? I, I did not know that. Was it the EBR or like with the full wood stock? The wood stock. It's like an entire plastic stock, but it okay. exploded from where the uh, bolt release is and every part missed me. Okay. And the that's... only thing I have now is just the stock. 
but luckily I haven't run into that issue uh, so far. This one I got a one of the big ACOGs with the RMR on top, a mock PVS30, but it looks really re like real. Like even Scott was saying, he was like, "Is that thing real?" So like, it's a pretty good mock. Here's one of my favorites in your collection. W-E-S-V-D, especially the way it's set up right here. The long boy. S1 bipod, uh, suppressor. It's Dragnaw specific, believe it or not. Uh, it's like a giant PBS-1, I think is what, it, what it's supposed to be. And then a replica PSO-1 on, uh, PSO-1 optic, but... Oh my Ooh. god. Just a rewarding, beautiful gun. Wood furniture coming for it soon. Over here, this is the Snow Wolf M82 um, UTG overbore bipod. I have a thing for over, like weird things like overbore bipods, like WA2000 vibes. WA2000, M200. And it's not just a normal WA200. This is the SOCOM gear shell ejector, right? Yeah. And is. you only found out just recently. <laughs> yes. Because you thought you got the 8mm version. Yeah. I ordered like a bunch of 8mm BBs like an idiot. Because I thought like it only came in 8mm. I didn't find... And then it comes. That's definitely 6mm. But this is... Um, yeah. This is a sick, sick gun. Collector's piece. Um... Oh, there it goes. We will retrieve that after. But actually, I don't want to pick this one up. Oh, this thing is. Don't want to hit anything. Now I'm Mark Wahlberg. Right. Let's go set up a can of soup like two miles away. I swear, if that had landed on my toe, <laughs> I heard. That those are actual four four elite chi tac rounds, but I don't know if I believe that. Like I read that online, but everything you read online is true, kids. Everyone's a super general doctor science president. So here's a here's a silly thing. Have you ever dropped one of these guns on your own toe? I have. I broke a toe. I have like a few months ago. I have a foot injury from dropping a gun. I'll show you the exact gun. I'll show you exactly how it happened. <laughs> And it like I hurts to this day. I, I still, so I still can't uh, bend my left big toe because I dropped an ACR on it and oh, I yeah. fractured it just like that. Mine's the the APS eight seventy, and it, it was barrel like barrel end. I, I had mine in like it, like the bag and I felt it slip out, so I like scooted my feet back. Yeah. And when it didn't fall out, I was like, oh okay, so I just stepped forward, and then it fell out. I. You know, I thought about this the other day even, and I was going to say it in this video. I thought about how many injuries I've gotten from these airsoft guns over the day, like over the years. I've closed bipods on my finger, like shattered my fingernail, dropping guns and stuff. I've probably had more injuries just from like, not even from like skirmishing even. I've obviously got injured at actual airsoft games, but like even just like carrying the gun around and like you said, dropping it. I've gotten major injuries from... Uh, he like probably just as many injuries from hockey from airsoft guns. Last gun on Precision Island, the BFC Scar Mark Twenty SSR. Gas blowback, not AG. Yeah, gas blowback. I had an SSR AG, of course I did, um, and I tri uh, sold it. It was really nice, actually, the AG version. And I bought this one. Ordered it, twelve hundred bucks Canadian or something. And we've made a mini video on yeah, this already. Yeah, we did. We did a video on this gun. So I'm not going to pick it up manhandle it again. Big old T-Eagle optic. SRO canted. Monopod. Carbon bipod. Pack box. Vert grip. That's all you need. Oh man, people would kill for just like these six. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty nice. So for a few hours yesterday, we were trying to figure out how much everything costs and we still haven't gotten anywhere close to done, but how much do you think just this island is worth? Uh, off the top of my head, four grand on the island? 
I'm probably off. So around thirteen thousand dollars. Oh, so I was way off. That was just nine grand off. And we almost forgot we do have a gold GNG GPM yeah. nine, just because it looks really nice. This this is uh, I keep this out all the time actually. So I thought you leave everything like this all the time. Well, now I'm going to. Uh, I honestly don't want to know, but if I had to put a number on it, I would say. Uh, Roughly a hundred and twenty thousand Canadian dollars. All right, so let's just take care of at least three of the top ten for now, and then we'll return mm -hmm. to everything else. Uh, everything on this one spot is something I want. This is probably they're all on my like dream wish list at some point. Well, they definitely were all on my dream wish list at some point. And we're starting off with an Aries DSR one. Aries DSR one gas. Well, not a blowback, but gas version. These things are beast to hold, beast to look at, and terrible to shoot. Now, did you know about this thing before Black Ops 2? Uh, yeah, I did actually. Um, I used to research guns. I think I'd go on this website called like worldguns.reu, and I would look at guns when I was a kid all the freaking time. So I actually knew what this thing was um, before. I'm just. It is a bulk up. Some people are like confused. If they don't know the gun, they're like, why is, why is there two mags in this gun? It's just a storage. The legendary Ares Walther WA2000. Which is legendarily pathetic when it comes to <laughs> performance. <laughs> legendary to look at. Legendary gun, the real version. This one's kind of lame for what it is. Looks and feels great, don't get me wrong. If you don't know, it feeds from this like tube in the barrel. The like straw, right? It, yeah, yeah, it's like a, exactly, it's like a straw. Oh yeah, I forgot, it's gravity, so there's no spring. So you nope. actually have to tilt yep. the gun downward for it to come out, ugh. And then it's like bolt action. You gotta pull the bolt back and push forward every time. Me and Scott actually found this stupid, um, you can only cock it, at least this one's probably broken. You can only cock it on safe, and then once you fire, it won't let you cock again. You have to reset the trigger by pushing the safe again, push it back and fire, or no. You gotta cock it in safe, and then, great, now I will. Let's just say, there we go. like, Ares guns, Ares. beautiful, and it's hard to argue with them. They're beautiful pieces they on are. the outside, like this on one. the outside. On the outside. This one you could put as a display piece. And we got, for my MW2 boys, Mr. Yuck, VFC PSG1 gas blowback. I call it a PSG1 SD, even though there's no such thing. But this is a Angel Custom Aug Phantom suppressor. And it just, I don't know, it looks cool. It's ridiculous. It's kind of my ethos. This is the bipod for a Marui PSG-1. Took the scope off of my old Marui PSG-1 because the PSG-1 isn't complete without the scope. And the VFCs doesn't come with it. It comes with no, like a yeah. riser rail and it looks really weird. When you put a scope on it, it doesn't look right. I noticed that you don't have a normal VFC G3. Uh, it's on my like hunting list. It's, it's hard to get. Every, like everything's hard to get in Canada, unfortunately. But... I like to get the Task Force tripod one day, real wood grip, and that's about it. Yeah, zoom in. So I guess we've come down to the com block section, and the first two are already really cool. We got a GHK AIMS, I think they call it. Yeah, I just call it an AIMS. I, I don't know, AIMS -A sounds weird, but yeah, it's the Romanian version of the AKM, I believe. Um, These are so light, too. That one's WNS, uh, like, full recoil kit. Above it is a GHK AKF-74U. Uh, we did a video on it, but it has all uh, Zenitco furniture on it. A few internal upgrades, uh, EOTech, and a Russian crappy light. Oh, it's a Clash, that's what it's called. I need to get you in contact with my friend Brian because he makes drum magazines for GHK and WE Gas Blowback AKs. 
and you would definitely like one of those. Yeah. And if I'm getting a drum mag, then I'm getting a, a GHK. Like Oh, the RPK. RPK, absolutely. And then I think after that, we have four AEGs. Yeah. Uh, SEMA, AK Alpha, uh, Platinum. A lot of people do not like this guy. Uh, I think it looks... Re it, it's like a big mega block. It, I it, think it, it looks is. really I, ugly. I see what you mean. They tried to go like more ergonomic, but... I don't know. I like it. It's funky. I People like funky are calling stuff. this the Galil Ace, and right. you know what? They need to bring out a Galil Ace uh, next. SEMA Platinum. Above that, LCT SR3M. We got the SR3 there. This is the M version, full in stock suppressor. Extended bags. Yeah, extended bags. Um, and then one is unlike the other. Yeah, this is my one and only NPO A NPO AG. Uh, VSSM. It's got a Picatinny mounted PSO. That one's a real optic actually on there. Uh, still kind of terrible though. Oh wow, the Russian sights are not good. Yeah. I think every single Russian sight that we've got has been terrible. Yeah, they're, that's like uh, a common theme with them for sure. We made it, but we didn't make it good. Yeah, it looks cool. I, uh, beside it, LCT AMD 65. Oh, that was an LCT. Yep. Um, I've always thought these look really cool. I think a couple other companies make them, but I'd like to get the Hephaestus gas blowback version of that one day and get rid of that one. So we've been filming for a long time, maybe an hour at this point, but we've only finished off Precision Island, half of the top 10. All of this, like this is still a lot. This has got to be what, 50, 60 guns we've gone over? And Roughly. we still have another, like, 40? Next up, I, I do notice that there are a lot of SMGs in here. This is where I put most of the SMGs. You have a lot of TMPs slash MP9s. Any reason for that? Yeah. Well, the TMPs, I just, they're always in action movies as, like, the typical bad guy guns. They're always slung to their shoulder. Heat, um, True Lies... Um, there's countless movies I have them. And also, the TMP with the full stock here. Oh, I love that. And the, I got my and jacket. The suppressor. Here, this is uh, uh, inspired by Resident Evil 4. When you fully kit out your TMP in the game. And then I think it's got like an aim point usually on there too. That's where that build's inspired from. And MP9s are just modern TMPs. And they're just cool. Also, there were... A common sidearm for me and like MW2. I think I might have even like akimboed them for a little bit. So we have a KMP9. This is the KWA version. Shout out to KWA. Then we've got these two are the same kind of? What are those? Yeah, they're both KSCs. So they're a bit older. Um, they even have weaver rails instead of Picatinny. Yeah, they don't even have Picatinny. Then we have a WEP90. And I noticed that you set this one up to look like... The P90 from Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, I did. Uh, the HK sights and the side. I think it's a laser usually in the game, but the light works a little bit more. Oh yeah, that makes more sense. I wanted to do the same setup, but with Red Tiger camo. Yeah, that would actually be sick. If you do it, I'll do Blue Tiger camo on mine. That, okay, I'll deal. Absolute deal yeah. on that. So I recognize all four of these because I had two PP2000s from Modify. I gave away one forever ago. So now I've got one that looks a lot more like this. However, I have all the attachments that I could do this to it. How do you like the Modify PP2000s? I've been really liking mine. Uh, they're early. I got them pretty much right when they came out. Um, but... I, I really like these guns. PP2000, that's a battlefield bad company gun for me. They, they're funky looking, they're Russian, just has everything that I like. Like, the mag doubles as a stock. Another uncomfortable ass commie block stock. Someone really looked at that or the of her folding stock on the Scorpion and went, yeah, that's comfortable. That'll yeah. work. It's like, look at this. Look at how much surface area. It's, I can only imagine like how uncomfortable a real one would be. At least there's like no recoil on this. 
This is actually uh, a real uh, PK, PK06, another terrible site. Uh, suppressor, these are like the modify specific attachments, mm -hmm. the light and the suppressor. Now, does yours stay in? Because I know one complaint was these would always just fall right back out, no matter it, how tight you It still, yeah. Yeah. And great timing that we have both the KWA gas blowback vector and then the Crytac Alpine white vector, which I've got one of these and I might be getting one of these soon. I'm talking to a friend right now. However, you've seen that they've just announced the Crytac gas blowback vector, right? Yeah. So now is actually probably a good time to buy that KWA because that price level's popped a hundred percent. Oh yeah. Uh, all the every, like, Everyone was asking crazy money for these and now they're all punch in the air right now. I have seen these sold for thirteen hundred dollars, easily a thousand. You can easily get a thousand. Like if you were trying to sell yours, yeah, in your condition, yeah, you could have easily pulled a thousand dollars. And now that number is going to tank like crazy. <laughs> and I think the Crytac vector is going to be like four hundred U.S. dollars, which is very reasonable. So that'd be like yeah, maybe like yeah, four sixty, four seventy for you. They definitely, uh, yeah, with the conversion, but they definitely killed that that KWA vector market now but it's still kind of a collectible in a way oh, yeah. i guess oh yeah but definitely values dropped now when are you going to go ahead and take this one out to a field <laughs> yeah never uh the white i do not trust staying white <laughs> now mine's already a little yellow right then, here from just yeah you mine and probably can't see it on the camera but it is literally just from sitting and touching it with my hand like natural hand oil and dirt will already start tinging it but I got this like extended mag. Oh yeah, I think this is the lilacs part. Yeah, this is yeah, one that I want to get as well. It's actually, it works really nice. You can take your finger off the trigger oh, yeah. and... It's a lot heavier than I thought it was with the whole front end. Yeah. The Thor Ace Tech kit with like, has like the Bifrost tracer, all that good stuff. And that's the Bic rail, which is specific for that. And this is the Vism, V-I-S-M. I don't even know how to say it. It's just a funky, like, Futuristic Cyber combo. Pump. Yeah, futuristic combo. It's got like a little laser and, and floodlight on it too. Finished with that section on the couch. Now we have the wheel of SMGs. And man, there's so many iconic pieces here. But let's go ahead and start off with the KWA MP7. This has always been an icon and a classic of Airsoft. Even though it's not exactly one to one scale, you were no. saying that you want the VFC MP7. Yeah. But what do you think about the MP7 from KWA? Uh, it's done me well so far. I haven't run into any cracked uh, frames or anything uh, yet, so it's fine for me. It looks and feels pretty good. Beside it, VFC MP5K. Something we can't get in the States. Yeah, SEF Switch. Beneath that, another VFC MP5. Uh, a little bit newer, kind of a LAPD swap build. Beside that, uh, not a very common scene airsoft gun at least, but if you're in Italy, you probably see these all over the, like the Gendarmerie carrying, but it's an SNT Breda uh, PM12S. And if you're wondering what this belongs to, it is a PPSH drum, but it has been converted so it can be used with the next piece, which is a Echo 1 RDP Spectre M4. Yeah, with but, the top folder, another terrible stock. Wasn't this from Octagon? Yeah, yeah. so even uh, the threaded barrel was from Octagon. Uh, drum mag, everything, except for this side-mounted optic, which is pretty interesting choice, but there is a reason behind it. I wanted to have some sort of... Sighting system. Yeah, sighting system. Because when the, the stock is folded, you got nothing. But when the stock is unfolded, you can either just look down the actual iron sights or cant it off like that, which... As someone who really wanted one of these, I had to check that out. Yeah. And I wanted one of these a while ago because they popped up on Evic for a while. But I want one with a stock because I have a SPAS 12 and I could have had one a lot earlier, but I didn't get one because I wanted one with a stock. The same thing applies for the Spectre M4. But now they're kind of sold out everywhere in the United States, so I might have to make an overseas order if I want to really get one of these. I used to love it in Black Ops 1 with rapid fire, so that's why I just gotta have it. That's why it's there. Uh, video game gun, yet again. KWA 
VZ61 Scorpion with uh, this one's all stock. And another old classic KWA, the FPG9. Mm -hmm. MW3, baby. Oh, what do you got? A little lunchbox? Mm, pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much a lunchbox. Do you think your neighbors freak out when they see RPGs, mini guns? <laughs> <laughs> they probably just figure, like, this dude is a domestic terrorist. <laughs> we had the pizza guy come over and he saw that what we were doing yeah. and we had to explain and it's like uh they're all airsoft you want to come and check them out he was pretty he was pretty cool about it actually so. yeah yeah but he was also asking questions about what's going on on the tv he's like you playing forza all right we're done with the wheel of smgs we do have all of those to go over that's the rest of the top 10 but now we're over here on the floor with a bunch of well a lot of mas a machine pistols and then we have an ics over here uh, we got Mac 11, Mac 11, Mac 11, uh, another Mac 11. Uh, there are, is there a KWA Mac 11 here? All four of them are KWAs. Oh, really? They're all? Yeah. And then yeah, even that one has KWA NS1 internals. NS1? That's why I was like, yeah. Cobra. That's so cool. And I like that you added like a wood panel on the back. Yeah. That looks really, really nice, man. I think you've seen the collection video we did with my friend Brian. He owns a lot of gas blowbacks as well. And he had a Mac 11 on his counter and I immediately dropped it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold on to this. But we also have a GNG SMC9. Yeah. And this, I'm very, very interested in this. Northeast MP2A1. Yeah, it's not an Uzi. Not an Uzi. Not an Uzi. Northeast Uzi. I've been wanting to shoot one of these for so long. Maybe not the best thing to shoot in like 30 degree weather here. <laughs> I was seeing recently that uh, it just went up on Evic. Um, you keep, I know this is a whole like sponsored trip from Evic, but I keep bringing them up over and over. Uh, they just put on pre-order the actual Uzi with the wood stock and everything from Northeast and yes, I'm gonna do my best to get one of those. Beside that, uh, KWC Mini UZ. Uh, not too much to say about it. Suppressor's pretty cool though. Uh, buddy actually machined that for me. Uh, this is my oldest gun in my, like not my first gun, but my actual oldest gun. It's probably, might even be 80s, 90s. Merujan KG9. I do have the new KTC gas blowback on pre-order to accompany that one, but I wanted a classic airsoft gun. You have all the ghetto guns too. You have a you have a Tech Nine. You have the Max. You've got the Uzi. Yeah. Uh, I got a sawed-off shoddy. It's like GTA San Andreas up in here. And then lastly, we have the ICS PDW. I forget what exactly they called. ICS PDW Nine S. SS, I don't know. Then we have to move on to the section that gets a lot of questions. The RPGs. Now we do have we have a dual like RPG setup here. However, this one has a very interesting site. That's a real site though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Chinese version of the PG07. Why do you have two RPGs, by the way? Uh, this one I bought a while ago before you could actually get like launchers or it was really hard to get launchers in Canada a few years ago. I bought this one secondhand for probably way too much money because I wanted an RPG. And, and I would pick this one up but the cone will come off the back. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the uh, the kit that you get from from Evic, I believe. This one currently does not work. That's why I wanted one that works. This one works better. It does. Okay, I was oh. joking. <laughs> Getting a little bit more serious, yeah, people have been asking about these a lot because it, you have a G11, you have a G11, and then you have a Pancor jackhammer and the FAMAS that people have been actually wanting. However, despite having these <laughs> golden guns, uh, y'all need to know something. Um, these might not be exactly what you were expecting. Yeah, I was probably gonna let down a few people but these are major <laughs> work and progress, progress prototype. prototype, step stage one, uh, basically 3D printed bodies at the moment with some plans drawn oh, up. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it does 
it does come in three pieces, like the, the real one when you assemble it, but definitely some, uh, some tolerances need to be worked on. It's probably going to let a few people down because they're probably like seeing these pictures of these wild guns I post on my profile. They're like, holy crap, this dude's got a working jackhammer. It's not. They working. assume that. You didn't say that. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but this is actually uh, a better scale 3D printed body than... The one that actually kind of works. Yeah, so this one is a AAP one in a fancy G11 kit. It's done by Shoguns. You might have seen it online. I have seen these. I just... G11, I saw it. I didn't even care that it was an AAP kit. And they did a pretty good job on it for, for what it is. Uh, the scope's pretty hilarious. Uh, yeah, it's like something out of a little kid's toy. Dropping the magazine here, what's kind of cool about this is that that is actually the slide that's kind of connected to the AAP. So, as you shoot this, the magazine, as it would be on the real thing, actually moves as it's connected to the AAP slide. But pushing back on that will charge this. This is another gun that probably is going to let down a few but I do have two of these. The second one is currently not here. It's being worked on. The second one is a converted cyber gun F1 Evo inside of this body, which is Academy Airsoft, Korean Airsoft company. It's a Springer. This one's a Springer. Um, literally Springer, does have a Stanag mag conversion, and then Deep Al, uh, not too sure about the Red Dot or Suppressor. Cybergun, a couple of years ago, they showed off a flat top FAMAS and... I'm, I'm surprised, it's like... It never came out. Yeah. People have asked about it, people keep going back to this video where I showed it off and asking about it as if I would know whatever happened to it. But I think they still promised to make it, but I, I think people's hopes are starting to fall. I, I think with Northeast coming in with their gas blowback That's version, right! They're making a gas blowback from us. So, potentially, because they did two versions of the Uzi, a modern version of the Uzi exactly. and the OG. Maybe they'll do... And they like release this. parts for it. Yeah. This isn't supposed to be a huge plug for Northeast Airsoft, but yeah. when... Like, let's say if they were going to make, like, their own Spectre, they would release, like, a newer version, an older version of it. They would release the stock. They would release different magazines and all that. And that's why I really like yeah, about Northeast Yeah, they did that Airsoft. with the Sten, too. They did, yeah. like, all versions of They the covered stands. everything. Yeah, so... Hopefully the FAMAS gets that treatment, because that would be sick. I'd be on that like a fly-on ship, so. Guns, guns, guns. You're always ordering stuff. There's always something on order, always something pre-ordered, or there's always something I'm gonna pre-order or order. And then there's like a chock full of like guns just downstairs that are ready to be sold as well, because you're you're buying and selling like as yeah. you said, the AEGs and they're replacing them with as many gas blowbacks as you can. Yeah, so most AEGs might be gone in the next little while, but if they're gone, they're getting replaced. And if there's no gas blowback version to replace it, then I'm not getting rid of it. And of course, there's a few other pieces over here. We're going to leave these off for now, but like... I know people are going to freak out when they see that we have not just one, but two GHK Groses and my chargers on top of it. So this is the Mer Meruyama. It's a well-known brand. Yeah, yeah. Right next to APS <laughs> and KWA. And yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's up there. but It's basically a baby scar. I don't know. Yeah, it always looks like I did. This is another gun I had electric version AG of. I think King Arms, right? Uh, it was Arrow Arms, but Ares. Oh yeah, called. you're right, you're right. Yeah. This is the Glock version takes VFC Glock mags because... Uh, They're readily available and everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's just like it's a little stubby... I like it. I like stubby little guns. Ambidextrous uh, charge and handle. And you already have all the accessories for this thing, right? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna dress this bad boy up. Because I've always liked that because there's 
so there are people that have bigger collections than you and on uh, YouTube yeah, absolutely. as well. But like you don't have, you know, 40% of them being like $4 Springer pistols or like stuff that's just covered in dust that has no attachments. Like this is dressed up, that's dressed up, that's dressed up. You've got the attachments for pretty much everything. So like if it's supposed to have certain things, you've got it. And if it is supposed to stay naked, like maybe the MP5K, the MG42 over there, the minigun. Even, well, then the minigun still has a laser sight on it. Yeah. So if it makes sense to keep it stocked, then you do. But if you want, if you have the, the chance to, and you can, then you're getting all the accessories that are supposed to go with that. And I love that about your collection. That's why I consider your collection like the greatest airsoft collection I've ever seen. So that's like, getting dressed up. I like to make them uh, mine. I like to make them feel like they're my own in some way or form. Just enough. So we're unboxing this and then a Ford Explorer just shows up outside. And again, I thought that we've attracted Black the attention Explorer. from the local police department. Yeah, he just thought a, a man walking his dog in a big black coat was a local SWAT. So picture this, once before I had my neighbor call the police on me oh, yeah. because they saw me through my window cleaning my airsoft guns. Why are you being a creep like that? Dude? And I guess they annoyed him so much where they had to send the police. But they basically told me, it's like, hey, you're not pointing your guns out the window, right? No, sir, I'm just cleaning them. Do you want to come and see what I'm doing? No, no, it's just your neighbors being a nosy asshole. And, and you're in Texas, literally like the gun capital of the world. Yeah, it's, it was probably just like, he has to go yeah. there. Oh, man. I want to go check out these guys. This and is Toronto Airsoft too. Yeah. So we got a VSC G36, right? Yeah, this is the G36C. This is the new version, 2023. So I believe they discontinued it for a while. I read they picked up or found some uh, spare parts lying around the factory and they pumped a few more of these out. I heard some pretty good things about them. It looks and feels pretty, pretty solid. And you you have a WE G36 over here, even though it's the larger version, but what do you think? Um, Better or on par? Definitely like that it has proper trays. The WE, at least mine does not. The body, feel, it feels light again. These VFCs, these gas pullbacks, they're really light. I mean, it's probably a good thing for, for most people, but since I'm a bit more of a collector and a little bit more realism, I wouldn't mind a touch more weight. But other than that, like the, I don't know if it's an nylon fiber or what, the body does feel really great. Lots of gas in it. They knew Ooh, what they were doing. That feels, that feels fantastic. Cool. Well, I'm going to be taking the WE version. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, do you realize where you parked? <laughs> oh, let me just go, put, lady, put your hands up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I guess next gameplay video, the Kimbo rocket launchers. See, this is what they really needed to do in Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> <laughs> this is why real firearms guys hate us. Yeah, that's exactly why. <laughs> so are you happy with this G36 setup already? I know you want to get some more parts for it. Definitely more parts, some side rails, maybe vertical grip. Not yeah, vertical grip has to be a must, but yeah, G36Cs so always look really good with these enormous, stupid sights. They're almost totally useless for what we're doing, but like... This is actually one of the very few full-auto real guns I shot. I shot in Vegas, and it was actually my favorite, other than the saw. Um, so th that kind of inspired this purchase. That's oh. how a real gun sounds. Heckler and big cat. <laughs> <laughs> Look and feel. Look and feel. This is all you want to do with this one. <laughs> you want to do it, you don't want to do You don't want How to do How can shoot. something look so good but yet be so shite? Yeah, so that was about 83 or so guns we counted. Uh, there's a lot more guns to go though. This is not the whole collection. Follow me downstairs and we will show you what's in store for the rest of the collection. We're doing this tomorrow just because it's been hours and yeah, we kind of underestimated how much there is and how much we were going to be talking. So 
we got all these still to go through. Shotguns, pistols, launchers, a few more rifles. And I think that's it. There might be a couple ones tucked away somewhere, but I don't think so. What are you doing? So do you need like a really good credit score to eat at this McDonald's or something? <laughs> that is the nicest McDonald's I've ever seen. All right, so we're downstairs. It's day two. We still got all of this still to do. So lots to go over. And uh, literally gonna go right ahead, start with these lever actions right in front of me here. This is the ANK uh, Winchester 1892 or 1894. Uh, I'm not too, not 100% sure on that. It has this, uh, comes with this M-Lock uh, uh, forend. I threw on the, the two round bullet quiver just for like looks. I love these Tacta, Tacta cool lever guns. Uh, optic on here, 3D printed thread adapter because this one doesn't come with a, a thread just for that comp and it's a cool gun but these things are like notorious for for leaking and not working too well it's definitely a collector's piece along with the, the one underneath it which is the Umarex Legends uh, 1894-892 this one enlarged tube this one shell ejecting very not practical and very leaky uh, sawed off mare's leg uh, I was trying to remember the brand yesterday, but I think it's like Merugian or something along the lines of that. I've, I've said before that as cool as they might be, lever actions are like the most pointless thing when yeah, it comes to like, soft. But they definitely are. As a collector, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like a lot of my stuff isn't good to, to game or skirmish, so uh, I collect for the sake of collecting. Do you care? I don't. No, no <laughs> I definitely don't. And then we got uh, these five rifles. They didn't end up fitting upstairs. A few bolt actions, one uh, SL9 DMR. So might as well start with this since I already mentioned it. Ares SL9, they call it the SL10T, but uh, M or I think it's key mod actually right there. I just got some rail covers. Optic, it's kind of like a PSG1E vibe, the stock, the pistol, uh, pistol grip, the trigger. I like this, but I've liked, I think it's called the sl Eight or no, the SL7 I think has like this gray stock. I've yeah, never yeah. seen one. They're like this, literally modeled after the civilian one. This one's a little bit more tactical. Uh, over here, this is the Steyr Scout and Modify work, uh, worked on this one with ASG, I believe. Uh, CS fans will obviously know this one. It's got the like no eye relief scope mounted up forward. Just a kind of a neat little gun. The, the bipod is literally the handguard. <laughs> That's always neat. Yeah, it's uh, it's a funky gun, kind of like the color too. Uh, over here, this is a King Arms Blazer R93 spring spring action. There is like a gas one. This I wish it was the gas, even though the gas one's terrible. Uh, not, oh, he wants to come check it out. Night Owl, Night Shot, uh, Night Vision scope, and some people ask about this. It does nothing for airsoft, but on the real one, it's a, called an anti mirage strap. So the barrel heat doesn't dissipate getting away your optic. It's just a neat little factoid. This is the Snow Wolf SV98. It's not a Raptor. And I have a POSP optic on there. A little Russian bolt action. And then the, a lot of guys like the, this one, Silverback SRS. Uh, that's the short one. And I got some, some carbon actually on it. The, act, like the actual carbon parts you can go buy. The suppressor, bipod, bolt handle. I like me some carbon fiber for sure. Thinking about getting the 50? Oh, I've looked at the HTI 50. Uh, it's definitely something I'd like to get one day to go like alongside it. So then coming over to the shoddies, uh, got a decent amount of them. Marui A12. Got one myself. Yeah, this is, has a little 3D printed four end, little MW2, MW3. Uh, or I like think, the breacher yeah, yeah. handguard. It's, it's actually pretty comfy. Got the drum for it, which is, make sure it doesn't fall. Uh, APS 870 Super Shorty, and I threw on the, the silly like tall folder, but I, I honestly just thought it like looked cool with the tall folder on there. And surprisingly comfy. Um, beside that, newest shotgun. <laughs> he wants to be, he really shot. wants to be in the video today. Uh, 
Marui Saga 12 gas blowback uh, shotgun. These are great, but it's, whenever you shoot them, it has like the slowest cycle rate. You know, it's like ka-chunk. Yeah, yeah. But it's actually kind of satisfying like that. I'm yeah, looking kinda, to get one of these too. It's uh, definitely a must-have, I think. And it's, and I like I heard these are really like good to gain too. So what I'm hoping is, if you know what this is, it's a gas-powered semi-auto mag-fed shotgun that TM has made. There's so many cool little advancements in it. I would definitely recommend Explosive Enterprises video on it. But as soon as these hit Evic, I definitely want to pick one up. But if they can do this, I'm hoping that they can make a gas-powered SPAS 12 oh, yeah. or a USAS 12. USAS. I like that idea. Or jackhammer. Uh, Merusian M1100 shell, shell ejecting semi-automatic shotgun gas blowback. Yeah, it won't do anything right now just because there's no shells in it, but it literally spits out the shells. Pretty like nifty little piece. Um, another famous TM? Yeah, another famous TM. The kel KSG. I actually really like this one. I got the Salvo 12, just chonky suppress like shotgun suppressor on there which is about the same size as the handguard yeah it's just for ridiculousness uh sema 870 with the magpul furniture just a, a spring pump action tri shot just uh handy dandy and then we got the boomstick which is the hawsan farsan it's been rebranded like yeah, four yeah. times they call it the mad max but yeah, this is my boomstick. And then over here, the SMT shell ejecting. No shells in it right now. Uh, 1887. Super stubby version. Uh, I couldn't get the Terminator one. And then I did this too. I did this little leather, uh, le leather lever wrap. Now, knowing that uh, I think Double Eagle makes the full size versions in black and in silver, are you interested in getting another one? Yeah, I was like definitely gonna like if I could get a full size one I'd put it alongside that or I might might even sell it one and just have the full size one but hmm. like I like the full size one for sure. Why did you want US Airsoft to make a video over your collection? Ever since I saw US Airsoft on uh, on the socials on YouTube uh, I feel like I had like a little bit of connection with them. Uh, I did like always see his posts. I saw Ferrari F40s. I saw Yu-Gi-Oh cards, stuff like that. I saw even the guns that he's posting. I'm like, these are literally all the guns that are like the guns I like. So, uh, like, I was always tagging them and stuff. I, I figured eventually you'd see uh, some of the posts. And uh, once you reach out to me, I was like, dude, you got to come to Canada. We will check out a lot of airsoft guns, and trust me, you will you will enjoy it. So, he was my first choice. <laughs> so then we come to the big shotguns. Or the launchers. Uh, well, some of them have like these like little rubber rounds, but start with uh, this here. Uh, it's not the Aries, I believe. This is a SNT HK M320. Um, it's a little breech side little launcher. These always look great on 416s. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you can like clip these on on mounts or. Yeah, yeah, they, they have like a Picatinny rail adapter on the top. Yeah. Uh, Thumper M79 by King Arms. Now, I always call it Blooper, but because blooper. I, a couple things, you know, Thumper. I think it's Model yeah. Warfare. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. BNT GL06 by ASG. Pretty pretty cool uh, launcher, actually. This is the... ICS? I, yeah, ICS MGL. This is not a real Armson OEG, but like, I like... I, I just like the look of it. It's just a, a mock 3D printed replica. Over here we come to the rocket launchers. We got an M72 Law. This is an inner deactivated real Canadian M72 Law that's been fired. There's a conversion kit I have for it. I haven't installed like because you can buy uh, I forget who sells them, but they're conversion kits that turn actual inner launchers basically because it's just an empty tube mm -hmm. to fire uh, 40 millimeter rounds. Above that, this is the Reaper Reaper's house. He's uh he's in France. He's a good guy. I, I shot him a message like out of the blue because I saw he he makes these launchers. He does a really good job. 3D print, uh, like PVC tube. 
M136 AT4 CS. But, like, he sent me this from France, like, and it came in, like, a month or something. I was, like, I was super impressed. And it works great. Uh, both that, this is the new VFC M3 MAAWS Carl Gustav. That is the newest one and probably the most, like, put together one out of all my launchers, including the RPGs. Uh, I've shot a couple times, and I'd like to get those like ex enlarged grenade canisters. And then this is another Reaper's Hips build, the RPG-26, uh, 3D printed parts. Now, as silly as it might be, I'm surprised you don't have a bazooka yet. Oh, like the old school? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could also turn it into a lamp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I could buy Panzer Fibs right now. Cause oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a few online. I was considering that, but... I wish it was a Panzer Shrek, because that would be, like, ridiculous. Super bazooka. Yeah. And then over here, we come to the pistols, which is my biggest uh, section here. That takes up a couch and a whole table. Yeah, there's 43 here, one upstairs, so 44 pistols here. Uh, this here is KWC CZ75 Competition I, what is it? IPSC. I might have got that wrong. Like a race Ray style gun, ASG BNT USWA one. This is a really good gun. I highly recommend it. This is a God. Who makes this one? Glock 17L. It's a. It's not a common one. I've actually never seen a 17L. No, I'm trying to remember. And then after that, uh, Marui Sig P226E2. Beside that, WEP virus. Beside that, this is a uh, HFC AG-17. It's like a funky looking kind futuristic of... glove. Yeah, yeah. Got some weird like iron sights that are built into the slide. WE G26C. One of my... Silver slide too. Yeah. Uh, one of my faves, KWA, KWA-93R. And I love those wood grips on it. Yeah, with some Kimpoi shop wood grips. Beside that, stock one. Beneath that, KSC Auto 9 for my Robocop fans. I'm sorry, but you can't just brush over this one. Yeah. It's yeah. actually really lightweight, which is something you can't show up on camera. It's also the size of my, my leg here. It's so. one of those ones, like they say, do not shoot it with green gas. The slide will like blow apart in one shot. So I was thinking about getting my brother one of these for Christmas or something. He yeah, put it in like a acrylic case with a Robocop. Yeah, he's never going to shoot it. Yeah. And then go to some deagles here, or no, I guess we skipped this one. Yeah. Uh, BO manufactured Chopper Rhino. Mm -hmm. There's a gold, uh, I bought a gold one too, and I gave it to my parents as a, as a gift because they love gold stuff. So. And it's really gold. It's not yeah, like, yeah, it's, like it's, you know how this is gold? It looks a little bit more yellowish. I'm not trying to insult really because WE makes a, an electroplated gold yeah. that looks really good. It's kind of like, it's like really shiny, like the brass. Yeah, yeah. it's like super finger, another fingerprinty gun. A couple Marui Desert Eagle with a stainless, stainless finish. Um, and then I got some big chunky wood grips on there. Above that, the uh, WE Cyber Gun Desert Eagle Gold Tiger Stripe. I just wanted a Gold Tiger Stripe Eagle. Oh yeah, yeah. And that, this is another Cyber Gun WE, just totally ridiculous dude with AW Custom. That extended barrel. And, and what's funny is these WE Desert Eagles have really good range where this actually isn't too bad of an idea. Maybe in the bipod, but... Yeah, it's not an actual like pistol scope. That would actually be kind of cool. Cause otherwise, you're, you'll be, this will be smacking me in the eye. But uh, if, I, if I get a pistol scope, maybe I'll keep it like that. Over to the casting couch. Whole swath of more pistols. Start with this AP-01. This is my, uh, I, I really like how this build came out. Mamba kit, all the Action Army red attachments, red bolt. I found this red dot on uh, a Wish or something. Looks cool though. Beside that, you can hear the cat knocking stuff over upstairs. Poseidon P18. Look at the like weird. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's I don't hard. know if you can see. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Those are strange. Uh, it's, it's a Glock 18. It, it comes with some. Uh, like internal stuff from factory. It's pretty cool. And it came with a t-shirt too. 
Thanks, guys. Tanaka M, M Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum with the short barrel. And I've got the 10.5 inch, so it's kind of interesting to see like the snub nose and stuff. Yeah, I almost cool. wish, like I would prefer the uh, the long barrel like that you have. Yeah. And then but I guess one, this one's cool too. One I've been wanting for a long time, and I won't pull the hammer back on this one because it's a little messed up, but yeah. Raging Bull, I've seen only one of those, so. Yeah, Merugian. Really like this one too, EMG Hudson H9, got the Aeronox kit on it. Funky looking 1911 Glock hybrid thing. Yeah, yeah. Piranha SL. Oh, show just, us that stock too. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I just, this was just a one. I just got another one I went crazy with. Um, the stock's not the. Crap. So. <laughs> basically, yeah, you would hold it something like that. Marui. FN57 with the garter kit, uh, two KWA USP matches. They're not the stainless slides, which I wish, because I'd be Tomb Raider in the hell out of those. But it's almost Tomb Raider. I'm like the Canadian Tomb Raider. SOCOM gear, PMR30. This is kind of a crappy gun, but I like Caltech stuff. It's just a little CO2. Marui FNX45 with an Osprey. Their armor and torch. This is a KJW Mark One or Two Ruger. Uh, this is a KWA, not the Marui Mark Twenty Three. This one is is blowback, and I got the the L the LEM kit and suppressor from a Marui, but I kind of like the blowback a little bit more. I know the Marui is definitely no more accurate and whatnot, but back for realism. This was really expensive, believe it or not. Even though it's all plastic, Maru's in PPKS. Kind of tough to find. I got the trifecta of Marui compact carry pocket pistols. This is the Smith & Wesson 380 bodyguard. The absolutely horrendous looking Taurus curve. And that is the Ruger LCP, not the two. The first version with extended mag, which looks funky. And I put the little uh, Crimson Trace laser on it. So, that, like for, for emergency situations, I get like, this would actually be pretty neat. This is the Raptor MP443 Grok, Grak. I don't know. Grosh. 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 Or whatever. Yeah. Battlefield Bad Company made me get that gun, so. I got a little Russian laser thing on it. I never know what their attachments are called. This is a WE TT33 TT uh, silver. We got the ASG CZ P09 Urban Gray, the P09 uh, compensator. I love these. It, it, it's really like comfortable gun to carry. Um, oh, and you got the height and set, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Below that, I don't see too many of these. I think this is the same brand that makes the sawed off shotgun. It's a Thompson contender, like single shot, kind of sniper y pistol, kind of weird. It's kind of like the duel. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a. It's cool. I like it. You can get short barrels. I like the long barrel. Looks like I'm going to like snipe some dude with a handgun. Uh, beside that, this is not a WE, this is a kind of a crappy KWC Luger P08. To the left up here, Marui M&P9L ported uh, light dot tau trigger, which I didn't install properly. Over here, KWA Mark IV. The only 1911. Yeah, the only okay. the only 1911. But I'll have I'll get more 1911s uh, one day. And then above that, uh, KWC Macro PM. And there's a couple up on the couch that I missed the one over there. Nothing too special. WE Galaxy Carbon Suppressor dot. And that is a WE Baby High Kappa. With the Extendo in it. Yeah, with the Extendo and. I couldn't remember the, the brand because so many brands make this now. Could it looks be, like the Jag Arms. But it could be Jag Arms. There, yeah, there's like four different versions now, so I could be wrong about that, but I think it's the Jag. 
I've seen these on Evic in a whole bunch of different places. Yeah, I kind of wanted to go with the uh, the TT TTI MPX upstairs, and that's that's all the, the pistols other than the the gold GPM. What is that? Uh, there is one more thing. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to take it out of the box, but trust me, it's in there. This is a, a second Walter WA two thousand. Oh, that I kind of just bought and I didn't open it because reasons. <laughs> Watch in like 10 years, either nobody else makes a WA2000 that becomes worth like three grand. For or like reason. a bunch of like sweet gas blowback and stuff versions come out and then that thing. And that's used as <laughs> firewood. Yeah. So these last ones here we're going to take a look at are my favorite. Uh, there's seven guns here left. Uh, we're going to go take a look over here on the chair. Start with my KWA. Scorpion. This gets a lot of attention yeah, for this obvious gets reasons. A lot of questions and attention. Some brain exploder 3D printed parts. Love Shout out. Extended mags. I got a ton of these extended mags. I got the Sig Romeo and everyone loves this. It's a handmade stock from Japan. Uh, Ahuate Customs, I think is how you say it, but uh, I highly recommend. He hand makes them. They're really, really comfortable. That's really what makes it one of my favorites is that like that's what separates it and then in the same sense the stock on this is what makes it for me K kwa uh, kmp9 i got the power up bnt suppressor aim point t1 light laser and the stock is a, a custom 3d printed uh it's modeled after the bnt it's not the tmp stock it looks like it. Which is over here underneath the pillow. Yeah, it's vaguely, it's vaguely similar, but also different. Uh, above the KMP9, everyone loves this Spaz 12. This Mime really Spaz 12. Got the stock with the hook. This one's, she's seen better days. A couple of chunks taken out of the pistol grip. The guy drew a little hole Ugh. so sadly in the stock. To try and see like the iron sights with the stock folded, so dumb. Beside that, one of the most terrible feeling, but beautiful looking guns in my collection, SRC XM8. The only SRC I want. Yeah, I, the only SRC like I would want to. I did have a couple other SRCs, I sold them all. But I, like, I really like the ISMV Optic, one of the hardest attachments for me to acquire. And it is, if you did not know, the actual Optic that they had on the XM8 prototypes. So. We'll go over here to the last, well, there's four guns here, but two of them are the same. So we'll start with the two that are the same. And these are actually, honestly, my favorite, my collection. You guys know exactly what these are. These kind of like separate my collection from most usually. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it is a GHK slash Hephaestus Groza. It is a AKS 74U bullpup. This one's done up with the vertical grip. I threw a 7.62 mag because there's like a 14A version. I'm not too uh, well versed in like the ver different versions of the Groza, but I have two of them. This is my favorite one. This one's like brand new. This is like a very expensive, hard to find gun. And we just last night filmed a mini video, which probably went up before this. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other version. The other version has the suppressor, the specific 9x39, grows a mag. Those look so great. Yeah, we don't really know how to hold it if you hold it from here, if you hold it like that, but it doesn't really matter. It's a Groza. This one's also in really good shape, a little bit more used, some little nicks, but nothing too shabby. Holy shit, she's got a gun! Usually whenever we see these, especially me, I've seen like maybe four or five of these Grozas and they're either rusted, parts are missing, I've seen things held on by nuts and screws. These are the best, most well-kept Grozas I've ever seen. I've even seen somebody take the parts that made a Groza a Groza, take them all off, and put them on a WE Tech. Yeah, I don't, I do not understand that at all, but... 
at least maybe it'll add some more value to mine. So please, everyone, butcher your grozas so mine adds more value. Not that I'm ever going to sell it, but... <laughs> uh, besides that, the notorious Classic Army full size, not the little micro gun. This is the M134 minigun, Vulcan. Um, haven't really done too much. I put some hockey, hockey tape on the grip and I threw this laser that doesn't really work unless you have your hand out of the way. And then I threw this uh, red button that does nothing, but it looks cool and it makes it makes me feel like I'm a predator or something. So this is just another gun that every uh, collection needs eventually. Just a mini gun for for that reason. And I guess the very last thing, and we didn't really intend for this to be the very last no, thing, no, really, kind of happened. Is the G and G GMG forty two? It's an MG forty two. And I've said before when it comes to LCTs, some GHKs, that you can throw an LCT through a car window and it'll be fine. You could destroy a car with this and it'll be fine. This thing is, I know they say it about the SNT AGM MG42, that's all steel, which it is not. No. It's mostly aluminum and pot metal. Yeah. This is legitimately all steel and you can tell this like 24 pounds yeah this thing's crazy heavy and all the weight is up front which totally throws you off so some people are like 24 pounds that's nothing and then they'll hold this and like no dude i'm not playing with that yeah this thing i could only imagine trying to lug it around for a game um i this one's a really recent addition for me so i'm still learning the learning the hoops with this but it, yeah this is an absolute this can be a museum piece beast. Like amazing finish. Um, charging handle actually charging matters. Handle. The yeah, barrel. You, you can't see it, but yeah. um, basically the barrel and the hop up is connected together. And when you use the charging handle, it actually pulls it back against the piston. So if we lift up here. Yeah. So yeah, what we were trying to say is if you pull the charging handle, you should see here that the hop up and the inner barrel will actually come back. And if you pull it all the way back, it'll lock and you can see that one button here. I'm not going to press it, but if you hit that button, the barrel and the hop up will actually go back into the outer barrel. And then once that happens, you can pull the lever here and the whole barrel assembly will come out just like the real thing. And that's so freaking cool. It makes the AGM s &T totally irrelevant at exactly. this point. Exactly. Just for that feature alone. But then there's all the other stuff of the steel build, the finish, like everything. This thing, I know it's expensive, but like for what it is, for a collector, I think it's definitely worth it. So uh, I think the only thing that could top this is a showy gas blowback MG42. Yeah. But that wouldn't really perform on the field. This thing, I haven't even yeah, been able to see what this can range yet. You can I actually use, uh, use like use this too. Yeah, yeah. So. I use mine with point uh, thirties at least. I'm trying to get bottles of point forty because this thing can dish them out and. I really need to see what the range is. I'm really hoping mine just stays amazing. Yeah. I cannot I'm, wait I'm, to review mine. I'm gonna, obviously, like most my guns, kinda, it's gonna sit there on display. I need to get one of these. I got the black drum, so I really want the green one. Yeah, it came, it came with the, dream, the green drum, so I was happy with that. And then this this bell link here, I forgot to mention, this is for the minigun. It's just a 3D printed uh, ammo shoot link type thing, so. Yeah. I was looking at, like, if I got my minigun, I would really want to get an actual uh, feed shoot. Yeah, with uh, the Yeah, so. good luck. <laughs> I've looked around, and they're either, like, 700 to $2,000 in the U.S. If you wow. can find one for sale. Wow. It's so hard to, to pull this. You gotta do it just to tip your fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the one we were talking about. This is a gold G&G &G GPM-9. I love it when G&G &G does gold because it seems like they're one of the very few companies that knows how to do gold right. It doesn't look just yellow. It's, mm -hmm. They did a good job. Yeah, it's actually reflective and nice looking. When they did this on their AKM forever ago, I thought that was the very best looking gold airsoft gun in the game. And then LCT did a stainless steel all silver AKM. Yeah, I've seen so those. 
I almost feel obligated to get both just because I'm a very gaudy person. He said his mom's place was modest. It's not too often when we have a situation of what the f are we even doing here? Look at that thumbnail. Okay, so it's super cold. We just finished up the thumbnail. My memory cards are completely maxed out. And now we gotta put this Lamborghini right back in the garage. Can't even take it out. Weather just sucks too much. Bummer. <laughs> Okay, so we're setting up here at Josh's dealership with uh, pretty much everything that I want to shoot. Stuff that I can't find in the United States. So we have, well, I just brought the WE SVD because it looks really, really good. I want to just shoot that regardless. But VFC PSU-1, the uh, SCAR, uh, what was this called? It's the Mark 20. Mark 20 right? SSR. Yeah, yeah, the Mark 20, we got that here. VFC FAL. The VFC HK53, the Grozes are both back here, and the Northeast Uzi, I can get that in the US, but I just really want to shoot that. VFC MP5K, and a few other little things. We also have the G11 just peeking out there, the one with the AAP inside. Magazines, we pretty much have everything all set, so we're yeah. just going to pull everything out of here, probably put it on a time lapse. Isn't it beautiful? Everything about it is just beautiful. I'll never get over it. You know that scene from the first Fast and the Furious when they just have all the parts for the super laid out on the ground? Oh yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. You think we brought enough? Enough gas, BBs? Maybe not enough guns though. No. You can actually hear the opera music playing as I do this. That's like a way higher rate of fire than I kind of would expect. It. Like it even more? Oh, definitely. Now imagine the SCAR SC 308 and gas go back. Oh, that'd be sweet. Like with the little stock. Like yeah, 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 yeah. W stock. Yeah, a no, SCAR I, I, HC. I, like, I love shit like that. Would be 100% useless as a real gun, but super cool. Like it and is a it's airsoft. Yeah, in airsoft you can do anything, so. All right, this one I'm not fucking around with. I'm gonna go straight to full auto. Like God intended. I just showed Josh just a little bit ago, like the bar fight scene with the little maid in Black Lagoon. You thinking about watching Black Lagoon now? Oh, oh, I definitely would watch that. It's like my second favorite anime of all time. You totally dig it. I would have known that trying to shoot the most unique, most expensive, weirdest freaking AK that probably did so freaking well in the real world would suck so badly. It's an absolute pain in the ass. GHK, do you like hate your fan base or something? Because y'all's magazines are the most like biggest pain in the ass to load yeah. with the little finger banger speed loaders by hand. I guess you have to use tools. To you load can, yeah, the it does. I might have one of those adapters at home, um, like the one that comes with the GHKs. But even that one doesn't even work that well. <laughs> right? So, whatever. Let's just pack it up and go. So we just finished the collection video. Uh, it's, it's been a hell of a few days, but it's been a blast. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to, to Evic for sending Scott over here to Canada, US Airsoft. Uh, Evic, big like uh, shout out for doing that. Uh, and we had a great weekend. Uh, we did so much stuff. We're pretty tired. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoy all the content and all the stuff uh, we've made and or what Scott, Scott made and what I've 
brought to, to show you guys. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank all you guys, all the viewers, uh, the fans of US Airsoft, and of course, uh, Evic. And thanks for coming to Canada, guys. Like, Canada, I, I, want, I want to get us on the map. We love Airsoft and we have a huge Airsoft community. So yeah, thanks again. If anyone has any questions about any of these Airsoft guns pieces you guys have seen in any of these videos that might not have, uh, any questions that might not have been answered, shoot me a message. I go by half speed, half sim on Instagram, Reddit, and uh, I'll, I'll try to respond as fast as I can. Sometimes I do get a few ma messages and they get kind of bur buried in there, but I'll try my best and yeah, that's it. So I'm here doing B-roll and photos while Josh is about to go head out take care of something. And now I'm taking photos of the PSG-1 by VFC. And I think that this and the WE Tech SVG down here, it's not really at a good angle, are probably my two favorite in the entire collection. I know they're enormously long with their suppressors on, but you cannot say that this doesn't look great. Purring. Do you like it? Don't you? The world is gonna end if you arm a cat. <laughs> this is how the apocalypse starts. <laughs> so is this what we're doing now? We're arming cats so we can take photos <laughs> for Instagram? Cats get so many likes, like you can just post a cat and you'll get like triple the likes of what you get on a normal post.